This follow along is for the crow to handstand. Now with the crow to handstand, we're looking at going from this position, the crow or the frog, and then entering the handstand position with control, and then have the ability to come back out, and catch back in that froggy crow position again. Now in terms of prerequisites, what do we need to have? We need to have a crow position of some sort. Ideally, we can move this up and down, so I can take the toes back towards the floor, I can take the head towards the floor and come back again. If you can't do that, that's part of the process. We need to understand that control of moving the hip up and down and the shoulders up and down at the same time or the opposite, so they work like a seesaw. So that's exactly the same as we go when we go from the L-sit position through to the shoulder stand and then back to that L-sit position again. And if you're not doing this one, Again, I recommend the L-sit, the shoulder stand as part of your routine, because that carries over to so many exercises. And then we need some sort of handstand. So ideally it would be a freestand handstand, and we'd be able to tr go up and down, especially in like a froggy tuck position. It doesn't have to be a super tight tuck, because we need to come down to this position and then come through to that position. So it doesn't have to be a super clean tuck, but the better your freestanding control is, the easier the transitions are gonna be. Now you could be against the wall, if you need to be, but you need to have some sort of control here because we need to be able to come down uh, and use the wall a little bit, but not too much on the way down. So you can be sort of in between. Ideally, you'd have a freestand handstand, but you could be on and off the wall. Then we can do a couple of tests. So test number one is, do you have just the grunt? Do you have the strength to pull, push out of that bottom position while loading and going towards overbalance? So what I mean by that is if you just have the grunt and be able to push, you might be able to push yourself in that direction. We don't wanna go in that direction. We actually wanna go slightly overbalanced. So do you have the grunt to push out of that position and go up, even if you go to the wall. If you have that already, then you can just refine that by using the wall very, very lightly, go very, very slow. It's gonna be hard training, but it's gonna be good training. And then the other thing to assess is the eccentric, the down movement. Can you go from a handstand and land in the crow? Now we can do this in two different ways. We can do it freestanding. So there, can you come down to that frog, roll through the back, Bend the elbows, find the elbows, and stay there. If you can do that, again, great. We can start to slow that down, use that time under tension, practice that L-sit to shoulder stand, crow up and get a little bit of momentum, and then we can start to work those two things together. If you can't do a freestanding, we can do it against the wall. We need to be a little bit careful here on how we get the hands away from the wall, how we bend the elbows, not to hurt ourselves, but we can turn the hands out, kick up to the wall, go against the wall, roll down, bend the elbows, try and find the elbows with the knees, and then roll out that way. That one can be quite hard on the bodies, especially the shoulders and the wrists, but it is one way of doing a slow eccentric. If we struggle with those movements, we don't have an eccentric, we don't have the up, we can then start to break that apart even more and work on those individual components. So we need to start to work on the bent arm strength, so that control to do things like pike push-ups, the same as we would do for a handstand push-up, so building strength and control there. Getting used to that correct positioning, making the triangle between the head and the hands. And then we can work on that eccentric pathway, so coming down. Now I can mimic this laying down on the floor. So I could be in a handstand position like that. I round, push the low back into the floor, bring knees towards chest, and then knees towards elbows, and come back again. So the closer I can get to the floor with my legs, keeping the hips down nice and low, the easier it's gonna be. If I come up like this, that's gonna knock me out of handstand. So when I'm in a handstand, I would go that direction. We wanna keep everything on top of the hands, on top of the base of support, and that will be easier and easier. And we can mimic that against the wall, so similar to that one I just showed. So externally rotate the hands, kick up, take the shoulders to the wall. Now if that's hard for you, you could do repetitions of that wall lean position to build that strength and capacity to go in that direction. And then we're just gonna roll for a frog. So get the low back to go towards the wall, mid back, upper back, and then try and bring your toes down very slowly to the floor. And that's gonna teach you that slow eccentric movement that we need to control the eccentric portion of the movement. That will show you the pathway and build strength and conditioning through it. And then you can just slowly start to put it all together until you can do the slow eccentrics down. Either completely freestanding like that, to assist if you need to, you could put your toes down at that very last part and then slowly stop touching the toes. Or slight wall assist 
and then nearly step into it, single leg if needed, come down. And just trying to slow the whole movement down as much as possible. Then you've got those seesaws taking the hips up, shoulders down, and start to catapult yourself up a little bit and use a little bit of momentum. Now we'll break this down into programs and put it into the app. Reach out if you have any questions and good luck with your crow to handstand.